Hey, a party people. Today, we're getting sticky. My name is Big Boss Raz, and I am a VTuber and variety streamer focusing on arts and crafts like perler beads and crocheting. You can catch me on Twitch, where I stream every Wednesday and Saturday. You can find a link in the doobly-doo below. So, let's say you have your beads down on your board and you're ready to start ironing. Or are you? At this point, you can either iron directly on the pegboard or prepare your piece by using the tape method. We're going to go over what the tape method actually is, why you should consider using it, materials you'll need, different types of tape to use, whether you need to poke holes or not for it to work, and finally, we'll have a demonstration and see it in action. So, let's get into what the method actually is. The tape method is a technique that Perler Bead and other Fuse Bead creators use. It's done by placing tape over the Perler Beads while they're still on the pegboard, removing the beads from the pegboard, and ironing them elsewhere. Some folks advocate for poking holes, but we'll talk about that later. Folks use the tape method when they work on larger projects and or when they don't want to iron directly on the pegboard. Now, why is that? As it turns out, the more you iron your creations while they're still on the pegboard, the more deformed the pegboard can get. The heat can cause the plastic to warp and bend, effectively ruining your pegboard. And let's be real here, these pegboards ain't cheap! So the tape method is a safe way to save you money and time in the long run from replacing your pegboards. Here are the materials we're going to need. Besides your standard materials of beads, pegboard or pegboards, and iron, ironing or parchment paper, and something heavy, you will also need tape and scissors. As far as optional materials, consider using something small and sharp to poke holes and something flat and sturdy like some cardboard. We'll talk about why these are optional in a bit. You might be thinking, wait a second Raz, which tape do I use? And I would say, great question. Folks have mostly called this method the masking tape method because you can use masking tape. The reason I'm simply calling it the tape method though is because you can also use painter's tape. For those that use painter's tape, they recommend the green one as it's easier to see the beads on the other side than the traditional blue. Before we go into which one you should use, I just wanted to say that duct tape and scotch tape should be avoided at all costs. Don't even try it. Most people use masking tape because it has great sticking power, but some folks would say that it leaves a sticky residue on your beads after you remove the tape. I heard someone say that you can use dish soap to clean that off if you need to. Those that use the painter's tape would say that it sticks just fine, but rarely leaves any residue. Also, because it isn't as thick, some folks claim that you don't need to poke holes in them before you iron them. We'll go into which situations call for poking holes in a bit. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide which tape you want to use, but both are great. The main reason I use masking tape is because I already have some around. Maybe when I run out, I'll consider switching it up. Holy moly, let's talk about poking holes. If you ask different people, you'll get different answers about whether or not you should poke holes in your tape. Folks poke holes so that the creation can breathe and allow the heat to flow through a little easier. If you overheat a bead and it doesn't have anywhere for the heat to go, it will cause the bead to explode and warp. Like we mentioned before, it also depends on the tape you use. There are zero cons to poking holes for your creation. It just takes time and can be a little tedious. These guidelines are from my experience, but just to be safe, I recommend poking holes in general. Please don't yell at me if you didn't poke holes and your beads explode, please, 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 please. Anyway, here's what I found. If you're only lightly ironing one side and planning to iron both sides, you probably don't need to poke holes. If you're working on a medium or large piece, no matter the tape, you should poke holes. If you're using painter's tape, you probably don't need to poke holes. If you're using masking tape, you should probably poke holes. If you're using the flat mount on one side or both sides, you should definitely poke holes. A flat mount uses more heat for a specific look, and I have a video on that if you're interested. If you get worried about whether things will pan out or not, you should definitely poke holes. Again, just to be safe, you should poke holes either way, just in case. Finally, let's see how we actually do it. Pick one edge of your creation and start there. Cut off pieces of tape that have one inch extra on each side. Lay the tape down slowly, but with confidence. If you put some of the tape down and pick it up too soon, it will pick up your beads and scatter them. Place your next piece of tape with a tiny bit of overlap. We overlap to make sure all beads are stuck to the tape, but we don't overlap too much because it'll make it harder to pull holes later. Continue until you have placed all of the tape on the entire piece. When you finish, use something to really push down the tape to make sure all the beads stick, especially the edges. You can use a spoon or a battery, for example, but I just use the roll of tape itself. 
If you've decided to poke holes, do it at this stage. You can use a tack, a pencil, a pen, or even a separate pegboard. You have a couple of options if your extra tape on the edges is really long. You can cut the tape while on the pegboard, or you can remove it and then cut it. Cutting while on the pegboard might be a little more tedious. You can manually remove the creation from the pegboard by slowly loosening up one side and picking it up as if you're turning a page in a book. You can also use that optional cardboard to flip the whole piece and remove the pegboards that way. That might be easier for medium to large sized creations. Place it on a heat safe surface with the tape facing the surface. If some beads have been slightly moved or pushed out of line, you can use some tweezers to realign them. Place your ironing or parchment paper on the non-tape side of your creation and iron as you normally would, whether you're going for a standard melt or a flat melt. When you finish, place a heavy object to prevent the creation from warping and bending and let it cool for about 5 minutes. If you're going for the flat melt and you completely melted the one side, all you have to do is remove the tape once it cools down and you're done. If you've only ironed the one side lightly, you need to remove the tape, put your ironing or parchment paper on the unironed side and iron that one. To do that, pick one side and gently and slowly peel off the tape. Try using a finger or two on the creation itself while you do this. Again, place it under a heavy object for 5-10 to 10 minutes and you should be golden. So there you have it. Now you should know how to use the tape method for your perler beads. If you learned something new or just enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to find out when I drop new videos. It's free for you, but it goes a long way for me. Thanks for your time and consideration. So what's your experience using the tape method? Do you poke holes or do you skip that step? Have you ever had beads explode on you? Leave a comment down below. I love to see what other folks have in mind. Thanks for watching. Until next time, peace out.